Martian atmosphere could be used to make oxygen and rocket fuel. Mars may one day be able to sustain a human outpost with the help from the planet's own environment. 96% of the Martian atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide. Researchers believe this abundant resource, combined with the cold Martian temperature and non-thermal plasma, can produce oxygen and carbon monoxide. Local production of these gases on Mars could, in theory, help sustain an outpost or even colony on the Red Planet with oxygen and help with the deeper exploration of the solar system using carbon monoxide as fuel. But that being said, it's all speculation for the moment. So it looks like we won't be joining Matt Damon anytime soon. Conquest is easy. Control is not. Anybody up for some lunar cave diving? Scientists this week may have come across something that could lead to the first ever human outpost in space. A large and cavernous lava tube was this week confirmed to exist beneath the surface of the moon. These tubes are volcanic underground passages formed by flowing lava to funnel this substance. Once the flow stops, the tube remains with features similar to a cave. The discovery was made by a team of Japanese and American scientists who used data from the Selene and Grail spacecraft to acoustically map the enormous lava tube. The chasm is around 100 meters wide and 50 kilometers long and located in the Marius Hills region of the celestial body. It could provide shelter to astronauts during moon missions, protecting them from dangerous cosmic radiation. This could potentially allow for the development of a lunar exploration base. And that moon-based Homo sapiens could very well lead to a human colony. Life on Mars? Mars may not have been an arid wasteland after all, at least according to a new study that suggests the Red Planet may have been far more habitable than previously thought. Martian meteorites contain a specific mineral that has long led scientists to believe the planet had an ancient dry environment. The mineral, called merylite, contains no water or hydrogen, which led to the assumption that its origins were likewise devoid of liquid. But new research now suggests that merylite was originally a hydrogen-containing mineral and that Mars may have had a more water-rich history. When an asteroid or comet collides with the planet, the force of the collision propels Martian rocks containing Whitlocket out into space. Researchers theorized when these rocks enter Earth's atmosphere as meteors, the shock pressure and high temperature sustained during impact dehydrate the mineral, turning it into merylite. They tested the theory by blasting synthetic Whitlocket with a gas-powered gun at speeds of more than 1,600 miles per hour and with huge amounts of pressure. The shock experiments were sustained for only a fraction of a second, but already resulted in partial conversion, with 36% of the mineral transformed to merylite. The findings suggest Mars could have had a more abundant water supply. It also hints at the possibility of life on the Red Planet, as Whitlocket is water-soluble and contains phosphorus, which is an essential element for life. More detailed studies of Martian meteorites may provide more insight, but a Martian rock taken and transported to Earth will likely be needed for confirmation. For now, scientists need to make do with thermal imaging and rock sample analysis from the rovers. China's Concept Martian Forest City Matt Damon sure could have used one of these concept Mars homes in 2015's The Martian. The concept from the Chinese Space Agency, Tongji University, and Stefano Boeri Architects would see a spaceship ferry a colony of massive pods containing forest cities from Earth toward Mars. Once the pods have touched down on the Red Planet, in Habitat reports they would use ecosystemic seeds to take root. This colony of forest city giant pods, dubbed New Shanghai, would also reportedly contain an infrastructure and an Earth-like atmosphere. Would you like to live in New Shanghai? Mission complete. A team of scientists have finally returned to civilization after completing a NASA-funded isolation experiment to simulate life on Mars. The six-person High Seas Mission 5 crew lived in a dome on the Mars-like landscape of Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano for eight months. 
The dome was equipped with a kitchen, bathroom, common area, and six individual bedrooms. Though not confined to the inside, the crew were required to don spacesuits whenever they went outside. While in the habitat, the crew conducted scientific research, equipment testing, and resource tracking. They also had to learn to prepare food using dehydrated and shelf-stable ingredients. Communication with the outside were subject to a delay of 20 minutes, the same amount of time it takes for signals to reach Mars from Earth. To better understand the psychological impacts of a long-term space mission, they were fitted with sensors that gauged their moods and monitored interactions with other members. The mission is the fifth in a series of six studies designed to help NASA select crews that can do well on an expedition to the Red Planet. The sixth and final high seas mission will also last for eight months and is slated to begin in January of 2018. The U.S. and Russia are going to build an epic space base. The Deep Space Gateway. That may sound like some sort of science fiction fantasy, but it could soon be science reality. NASA and Russia's space agency Roscosmos has signed an agreement to work on a new space station near the moon. The proximity of the Deep Space Gateway to the Moon would create opportunities for lunar missions and future deep space exploration, such as missions to Mars and beyond. Space agencies from Japan, Europe and Canada are also interested in working on the project that is currently at the conceptual stage of design. Once complete, NASA says it hopes to use the base to extend the presence of humanity in the solar system.